Hello, so in this video I'm actually going to show you how to make this uh, vintage dragon's treasure chest with dragon's eggs. I hope you enjoy it. So I have a square cake here. I did this on a 7 inch square cake and it's ready ganached um, and ready for me to actually get icing on. Now I'm using Saracino modeling paste but I've mixed it at 50-50 with um, fondant so that I've got a bit more of a firmer icing to work with to panel the sides and the top of this cake. So I'm brushing the top of the cake with um, just some cool boiled water just so it's sticky for when I add the, the icing over the top. I have textured this with a, a wood rolling pin and I've done a slight marble with ivory um, and some autumn leaf by Sugar Flare just to get a light base color um, that we will paint over later. I prefer to have a light sort of brown color um, or ivory to paint on rather than white um, because it takes the color quicker and lifts the colors quicker rather than building up on white. So I've covered the top first and then I'm going to panel on the sides of the cake. I found this the easiest way rather than trying to trim off the edges um, of the top once I've done the sides. So all I'm doing here is I'm using a PME ribbon cutter. I had measured on the side of my cake to make sure I could fit two of these in on the side of the cake. So brushing with water again and I'm going to pick up my piece and I'm going to place it along the side of the cake. I normally trim one end just so it's straight so I can start on a straight edge and then I can trim off the other edge. And just gently put this on. Try not to obviously push too hard or smooth it too much because you don't want to lose the wood texture that you've actually put onto the icing. And as you can see, because I've mixed a modeling paste and a fondant together, it's a lot firmer to work with. If you just use fondant, it will still work, but it might be a bit tricky to get it to stick on and actually lift it up because it's a bit stickier. Um, but this, this works well for me. Whenever I do um, paneled cakes, I'll always add my uh, modeling paste to my fondant. And like I said, I do 50-50, so half and half. Um, I'm doing all the bottom panels first, all the way around. But what I do is I do for argument's sake, the left hand side, the right hand side, and leave the back and the front so that it's equal when you actually look at the cake. So I do one side and then the opposite side, and then I turn it around and do one side and then the opposite side. Um, when you actually do this, you'll, you'll understand when you look at it so that they paneled equally. Um, so you can see here that I just check with my um, ribbon cutter that the next pieces that I'm going to cut are going to fit on the top of this and will match up to the actual lid of the box and then just gently trim off. It is really good to have a very sharp knife or very uh, sharp craft knife to trim the edges. It just keeps them as neat as possible. So when I've paneled all the way around, all I'm doing is I'm using a Dresden tool to just mark the lines between the two panels. Um, it just makes it a bit deeper, makes the groove a little bit deeper. So I'm using some lemon extract here and I'm using um, ivory, uh, sugar flare ivory color. I've watered it down quite a bit to start with and um, I'm just painting my first layer. So I always start with a lighter color on my first layer and then I build it up to darker colors to add on. So like I said, I, I water it down a bit, but then what I also do is when, once I've added some color on, I just dip my brush almost into a bit of the, the paste that's dry and not too watered down just to get a bit of a darker color. The next color I'm gonna use is um, chocolate which is sugar flare chocolate and again I'm just going right over all all the way around the box and don't forget to do the lid too um, and I tend to like I like to go from the corners um, in towards the middle because it gives you that wood effect from the edges and it makes it look older on the edges we are also covering the corners with um, some metal effect um, to, to seal the edges anyway. So it doesn't matter if you mess up a little bit on the edges here. Obviously, if you're doing this and you're not gonna cover the edges with anything, then just neat it up a little bit on the edges. But as you can see, I'm building up different tones. It just gives it much more of a wood effect. And using different, um, you can water it down sometimes and then other times just use a bit more um, intense color just to give it more um, shades um, and, and give it more wood sort of look to it and just go all the way around with your second color before you start with the next one. I always go all the way around with one color 
and then get my next color and go all the way around again with my next color. The last color I'm going to use is dark brown um, and this is just to really give it that last sort of dark effect over the lighter colors. Um, and again, you can see I go from the edges in towards the middle, some darker streaks, some lighter streaks, some watered down and some, like I said, I just literally dip the brush into the color itself just to give it more of a, a dark line or a dark streak through the wood um, for, for that lovely wood effect. Now, after I did all the brown, the dark brown all the way around the cake, um, I got a thinner brush and I literally dipped this directly in the brown and I went along um, the little groove between the two panels. It just gave it a bit more shadow and made it look like a wooden box with two separate panels. So you're actually separating the panels to give it more of an effect. Um, and then obviously, as you can see, I'm taking the um, wider brush and I'm just brushing over it again to blend it in a little bit. So it's not too, um, too stark, too in your face where that line actually is. And that's the whole cake um, painted all the way around. Now for the dragon's eggs, I'm actually using Kinder eggs. You can obviously use any eggs you like, but because I knew we were going to eat this as a family, um, I used Kinder eggs so my girls <laughs> would be excited about getting a little toy out of the dragon's egg. So I'm using Saracino modeling paste here. I haven't added any um, sugar glue or anything like that to the egg. I literally rolled the paste out so it was still soft and it was still warm and I've covered the egg and I'm just using some little scissors to trim off any excess icing. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, the, just like cakes, there's a back to everything. So you can place the egg against the cake so you can't see the line. But what I did, because of the Saracino modeling paste, it does blend very well. So as you can see, I'm using a smoother here to just smooth it the best way I can and obviously use my hands to, underneath isn't too bad. You can pop that in grass and hide the underneath. If you want the underneath to be showing, then obviously just smooth a little bit more. I set this aside just for a minute or two, just so it wasn't sticky when I picked it up to actually add the texture to it. Now to texture the egg, I've actually, um, I'm using a Sweet Elite Arc tool. This is one of the bigger ones. And I'm just going all the way around the egg and just pushing it in. Um, it, once again, you're going to paint over this, so it doesn't have to be exact. I've just tried to fit the scales as such in the best way that I can to give it a really lovely effect for when I paint it later, the paint will actually go into these grooves and actually look like little scales on it. Um, I did three eggs and I used, um, I've got a couple of the Sweet Elite tools. So I used different uh, sizes on each of the eggs. Um, so that they all looked slightly different, not too different, but just slightly different. Um, and once you've done this, just literally set this aside um, while you're working on your cake and then paint, I painted mine just before popping them on the cake. Um, and you can see I went all the way underneath, um, right down to the bottom. So it looked like scale, scales all the way down the egg itself. My girls absolutely loved eating these. And if you're making for a birthday cake, it's great too, obviously, um, because customers would like having the little toy and the egg for the kids too. It's a nice little way to add an egg to the cake. As you can see I've decided to go just around the top edge too to make sure the scales all around the top. Now we're going to start adding the metal pieces to the cake. So I'm starting with grey because I find it's easier if you're going to be painting silver um, it's actually easier to have a grey base. Again, it's, it's easier than building up from white. So what I did is I used my PME um, uh, ribbon cutter. I will obviously put all links down below um, for all my things that I use in the video, all my tools, etc. that I use in the video. But what I've done is I've, I've got the ribbon cutter and I've cut it to a point that I know that it can go all the way around the, a corner. Um, and as you can see, once I'd smoothed it a little bit, it looked a bit uneven. So all I'm doing is I'm just trimming it slightly um, to give it a straighter edge there. Um, and that's just made my corner on my cake of to, to give it more of a treasure chest effect. Now I'm cutting through here to make it look obviously like the metal isn't one solid piece either. It goes with the panels of wood. So I've done all my corners of my cake and now I'm cutting extra pieces and just fitting them in along the bottom of the cake between the corners. Um, my 
box itself is actually still a little bit tacky from me actually painting it so I am just literally sticking them on without having to use any sugar glue obviously if you have um, used if you've left it to dry you can just use a bit of sugar glue to stick these on I'm going to show you how I did the top edge too I am only using Saracino modeling paste here um, again it's the best paste to use or any modeling paste is good to use but I this is my pre preferred one and um, I'm just going along the top edge to put the um, metal effect along the top edge of the cake um, and as you can see I'm just trimming the edges to make them sort of tr um, triangular or pointy so that they fit in together so it looks like pieces of metal that have been um, worked together on the top of the cake and just neatening it up with my Dresden tool as I go along. Now as I'm using here I'm using a ball tool and I'm just making some little holes where I'm going to put um, just little balls of paste to give it more of an effect of um, little pop rivets or something like that that have been put into the metal um, to get the metal on the box. Um, it's just all little details for extra effect to, to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just rolling little balls of the same color paste. It is going a bit colored here because I had some brown on my hands from the painting. These are all the molds that I used. I used the um, Dragon Mold by Katie Sue and also the Hinges Mold which I put on the back of the box. Um, the powders that I'm using here, I use all Faye Carhill um, luster powders because they really paint on well. You don't need that much to get really good coverage without leaving streaks or anything like that. So I'm using coppers and silver and um, different sort of um, tones here so that I can build up a box that looks like it's it's um, it's really is metal and it's got that metallic effect but also a bit of a rusty color on it with the, the coppers um, and the browns and everything. I'm using a just a pipette, a plastic pipette and some lemon extract. Um, I use a pipette so I don't spill too much lemon extract but the lemon extract gives you great coverage with these powders. So what I'm doing first with the um, molds that are, or the little things that are popped out of the molds, as I'm painting a base coat with silver first, because I want to give an old rusty metallic look to these, I'm going with the metal look first and then I will paint over with some of the darker colors, but only just add touches of the darker colors so it looks like little bits of it have started getting rusted and old um, and a, a bit more of a vintage effect. And you can do this over, um, over any color. Obviously, you will see later in the video I actually do the darker colors over gold to give it that, that rusty effect. Paint along the edges, of course, because when you put it on your cake, you, you want it to be colored on the sides. You don't want it to be look white. The mold that I just had, that little dragon one that I had in my hand, there was a line across the middle. The reason I did this, when I'm putting it on the box, I made it look like it was um, almost like a, a molded piece on the box, but that it was along the groove between the, um, the wood panels. So it looked like if you open, if you imagine opening the box, you'd have half of the, the dragon piece at the top and half at the bottom. So it looks like it's something that's molded onto the box. So I'm going around the box itself and on all the metal pieces, I'm just painting them all silver around the box. Um, so I did all my silver first on all my pieces that I wanted silver, and then I'll go into my next color to add my next color. So obviously paint the sides, the bottoms, and the top of this all silver. I have got a light silver, and then I've got a, a darker sort of silver black too. So now I'm using the Faye Carhill Graphite Black. Um, it's actually really lovely. It's not too dark. It's just almost like a darker silver with a hint of black. And I'm just brushing it a little bit over um, the silver. You can see I'm not filling in the whole piece of silver. I'm just adding almost like shadow onto it um, to give it different um, metallic effects. And I'm adding this to my hinges and to um, my dragon too. Um, the, this dragon one I think is actually holding a a sword. Um, it's a fab little mold and it's really great for a sort of medieval themed cake. And then obviously the hinges you can use on treasure boxes, um, treasure chests, all that sort of thing. The hinges are absolutely fantastic too. There's really, um, it looks like hammered metal effect on it too. So you can see I've just gone along the edges, just highlighted some edges 
on the um, on the dragon and the hinges. So now I'm going to go around the top of my box and also along the edges and the corners of the box also with the graphite black again and as you can see I'm not adding a lot I'm just highlighting onto the silver to give it a little bit of a darker um, sheen before I start adding the rest of the colors to it and go all the way around the box and do this all the way around even across the um, little rivet things. So now I'm using fake Car Hill Cool Bronze. Um, again, just I'm literally just highlighting some little pieces. This is to give it the sort of rust look on, on the metal pieces. Um, it's actually very effective and you don't need to add a lot. You only need a very, very little bit. And I'm, tending, I'm, I'm, I'm going across the pieces that seem to be standing up a little bit more, like a little bit on the dragon's head, um, the tips of the wings, um, the pointier pieces. Um, and you can see just adding a little bit at a time. You don't want to overdo this and you don't want to lose the silver underneath because you're building up in layers um, to, to get the really good um, metal effect. Um, go over your hinges too, of course. And then you're also going to go... Um, on and around your box edges too and you'll see when I actually do the box pieces I tend to stick to the edges and the corners rather than the whole piece of metal on the box and I say metal obviously in inverted commas because I know it's not metal but that, to get that effect so again with the cool bronze just along the edges and also I went around all the the, the little rivets pieces too so it looks like they're sunk in and that they they're kind of rusting a little bit around them um, from it from it being an old vintage sort of dragon style box and you can see what I'm doing with my paintbrush here is I just go along the edges but I almost use the side of my paintbrush to just run along the edges um, not to get trying not to get it onto the box itself um, but just to to give it that, that shiny effect you know on the edge of metal you get that little bit of tarnishing that's what I was trying to kind of get with this and don't forget to do all your rivets they do take a while <laughs> these this is obviously a shortened video but this took me a good few hours this cake um, but I really enjoyed working on it so literally on the edges I added a little bit more on the corners now what I'm doing is the brush that we used with the dark brown on it what I've done is once I'd finished this painting I took a little bit of brown still on the brush and I just dry brushed over this to just kind of give it a bit more of a matte effect. Now I'm using the Dragon and Wings mold from Katie Sue Designs and this one I've painted with Faye Carhill gold and um, I'll pop the, the correct gold below I can't remember which one it is now and I painted gold first um, I painted the whole dragon gold because I wanted a little bit different from the edges of the box I wanted this to really stand out on top of the box um, from the other metals and the silver and everything I wanted to give it a, a sort of a luxury look like it was something that you were really finding something really magical um, some kind of awesome treasure that you were finding rather than just something metal um, I wanted the dragon to really stand out on this so I'm going to use the um, graphite black again just to highlight a few pieces on the dragon itself um, that doesn't show up that much against the gold but I just wanted darker pieces especially where the eyes were and a little bit along the um, spine of the um, the dragon the dragon's body um, and just literally again you're just highlighting you're not covering all the gold again you don't want to cover all the you just want to highlight certain pieces that are standing up so that they show up above the gold um, I, I always paint on a piece of parchment paper too I find it's a lot easier because sometimes the the liquid from the uh, paint can actually seep in underneath what you're painting and it can make it a bit tacky so I always find if I actually paint on a piece of parchment paper it's easy to peel off and you can leave it to dry without it drying to like a cake board or something like that and you can literally pick it up on the paper peel the paper back and you've got your item that's ready done so as you can see I'm adding a little bit of silver now too along the front of the the dragon um, and just highlighting a few little pieces on so you've got sort of the darker graphite black with the, with the light silver against the gold um, the gold which is the base of course 
and just literally I like I said I wanted to have like a Regency look something that, that you'd imagine finding and it's this magical thing and you're like oh what is that shiny thing and it's a rusted old box to really give it that vintage effect um, and that, that really metallic uh, treasure effect on this too so I'm adding a little bit more lemon extract here and this is copper and bronze that I've got here um, they just got a little bit more red in it, um, especially um, the bronze one. I just wanted a little bit of red because it, with it being a dragon, I wanted a, a hint of red on it. Um, and again, just like you did with everything else, you're just adding certain highlights. Um, I, I didn't want to overpower it with a different color, but I wanted different metals in this one as opposed to just the silver that I did that only had a very little bit. Um, and you can obviously go back over your box if you want to and any of the other molds You can add a bit more of the copper and the bronze and all of that if you want to bring that color into it There's no there's no set way to do this. There's no right or wrong way to do this I you know obviously as I'm doing this I was just winging it and kind of building up to what I wanted to add on to it um, But these molds are fantastic really easy to get out and they're so effective to add something special like I said to a great medieval cake um, or even up the front of a cake there's so many different ways to do this um, I did find it easier to paint it though rather than trying to um, make the dragon a specific color but you can start with a color for arguments like a green or a red um, and then you can add some highlights with different paints on top of that the the detail in the in the dragon is fantastic with the scales and it's really great to paint over because it really brings out the the detail in the design um, it's a fantastic mold so i did this cake all in one day so the icing um, on my uh, cake itself is actually still a little bit tacky from where i painted it so all i did was when i finished um, painting the dragon because i used lemon extract it does dry quite quickly and the pieces are still quite flexible so I put this directly on the box and just placed obviously the wings and everything where I wanted them, where I was happy with them. If you need to, you can use a little bit of sugar glue just along the back to make sure obviously that it's sticking, especially if you're putting it on the front of a cake, you will need to add some glue on the back. Um, but that's the top of the cake um, to show you. And then what I've done is, again, with the, the wide brush, using a little bit of brown um, paste to paste color to just go over it to, just to mat some of the the metallic down a little bit um, it, it just it just kind of finished it off for me and it, I like to just add a little bit of brown on to tone it in with the actual box itself um, so just over the edges and I did it on the silver of the, the box to um, just to tie it all in and finish it off neatly together just making sure the arms and everything were properly stuck on there um, and yeah that's finishing it off and don't forget the eggs um, I did three eggs um, I ended up not being able to fit all three on so I only used two um, but I just used some of the color that was left over so that it would tie in with the cake and match nicely with the cake um, so again just lemon extract painting over and just leave it to dry for a little bit obviously before trying to add it to the cake board I just put a little bit of sugar glue underneath um, the egg and stuck it to the board as the eggs added to the cake um, just placed alongside the cake and then also just showing you the dragon with the skull on the sides which makes it look like molds on the side and then this is the dragon with the sword on the front which is supposed to be the opening of the box and the hinges at the back of the box so it looks like you can actually open the box